is going on everybody and welcome to the 21st machine learning with Python tutorial video where we've been talking about the support vector machine in the previous tutorial we talked about the high high level intuition of a support vector machine and then we actually applied it with real data and now what we're going to start doing is breaking down the support vector machine but first I want to talk about vectors, uh, pretty much integral, hence the name, support vector machine. So I want to talk about a few things about vectors just to make sure everyone is on the same page. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's draw a vector. So first let's have some, we're going to have some vector space here. Otherwise you can call this a feature space as well. So this dimension here coming out uh, might be your x1 and then this dimension here might be your x2 so you might call this your your feature space or your vector space now let's go ahead and add some ticks here so one two three four five and then one two three four five and now let's actually draw a vector so first let's actually we'll, we'll define the vector first so we're going to say vector a and the way you denote a vector is with the, the letter and then above it you'll have an arrow some people would just put a bar and then a lot of times people will forget to put anything at all. So if it's just a bar, sometimes you're just supposed to use your intuition to figure out it's a vector. And then sometimes they just forget to put it. I might forget to put it. Just understand when we're talking about vectors. Well, we're talking about vectors. So anyway, vector A. And we're going to say vector A is equal to 3, 4. And a vector has both magnitude and direction. So let's go ahead and plot out vector A. So to do that, it's just like a Cartesian coordinate at first anyways. So three, four, so about right there. And that would be our vector A. That's our, basically our direction because we know vector A is three, four from origin. So origin is just zero, zero. And so I'm gonna get rid of that, but I just wanted to circle it. So origin zero, zero and we will draw an arrow out so that is vector out to three four so we know the direction and now how about the magnitude so the magnitude is denoted like so double bars around the vector you'll see a lot of people just use single bars i don't think anybody's going to use no bars <laughs> that would be too confusing but anyways single bars double bars um, means the magnitude and the magnitude is the same as the norm is the same as the length we've actually already calculated the norm if you recall with euclidean distance with our k nearest neighbors it's it's the exact same algorithm that we would use so just keep that in mind but um, let's go ahead and calculate in this case how might you calculate the magnitude of vector a how do we do it well, to calculate the magnitude of a vector, it's just the constituents of that vector squared. I guess actually the way I would describe it is the square root of the squared constituents summed together. And so basically, let's say we wanted to figure out the magnitude of A. That would be the square root of 3 squared plus four squared that would give us nine plus 16 otherwise known as 25 the square root of 25 equals 5 therefore the magnitude of a equals 5 so that is the magnitude and that and if that looks familiar that's because it should be familiar because of like Pythagorean's theorem we could make a triangle out of this right so you could say this is a side of the triangle this is a side of the triangle this length is 3 this length is 4 3 squared plus 4 squared is still 25 and if you recall uh, Pythagorean's theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared and that's basically a restatement of this right here so yeah it's the same thing the only difference is we can continue adding dimensions out to calculate the magnitude. So now, the next thing I want to talk about is the dot product. So with dot product, this is the dot product between two vectors. So let's say you've got a vector A, and the vector A is equal to, uh, we'll do 1, 3. And then we're going to say we've got a vector B, which is going to be equal to a uh, let's do four two so to do the dot product you would write that out as it's literally just a dotted with b and generally here you'll see the vectors and the way that you do it 
is this just the basically the constituents times the same placed constituent in the other vector so it would be one times four plus three times two so a dotted with b would be uh, one times four plus three times two so that would be 4 plus 6, otherwise known as 10. So a dot b would be equal to 10. And of course, this is a scalar value. So those are the two major things that we absolutely have to cover as far as vectors are concerned, because both of these are going to play an absolutely integral role in the support vector machine as we start to build it up. So. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments or whatever up to this point, leave them below. Otherwise, in the next video, we'll actually start breaking down the support vector machine using vectors and dot products and all kinds of fun stuff. So anyways, uh, stay tuned in the next video. Thanks for watching.